You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 3rd of October and I'm Roland from Milford. The key economic news this past week was most certainly the U-turn in policy by the Bank of England. The mini-budget and fiscal policies outlined by new Prime Minister Liz Truss saw the pound fall significantly against major currencies and bonds materially sold off. This in turn put a huge amount of stress on parts of the UK financial system, in particular the pension funds who for a number of reasons had to post margin as the value of their assets fell and their hedges moved against them. This would force them to liquidate assets, putting further upward pressure on bond yields and forcing them to post even more margin, requiring the sale of even more assets and so on and so forth. This forced the Bank of England's hand and on Wednesday they announced they'd buy as many 30-year government bonds as necessary to stabilise markets. The plan at this stage is for this to cease on the 14th of October. Prior to this, the pound was at record lows against a number of currencies. It has since recovered some of these losses as yields have stabilised, albeit we are by no means out of the woods. Domestically, Aussie retail sales were released, coming in ahead of expectations. Sales for August grew 0.6% month on month, a deceleration from 1.3% achieved in July, but ahead of markets estimates. In addition, the new monthly CPI index was released by the ABS. Previously, Australian inflation was only released every quarter. I suspect we'll see this number revised as they work out the kinks in the system, but nonetheless, it gives us an indication of where inflation is in Australia. Headline inflation was 6.8% in August on an annual basis, slowing slightly from 7% in July. However, core inflation that backs out food and energy prices accelerated to 6.2% from 5.5%. In the US, the PCE data was released, which as you recall is a different measure of inflation from the traditional CPI index. It's also the preferred measure of the Fed. It highlighted that inflation remains sticky and persistent, increasing 0.3% month on month compared to 0.1% expected. However, what was most concerning is that core PCE inflation accelerated to 0.6% and came in ahead of 0.5% expected. Turning to equity news, Optus remained under pressure as more information on their data breach has surfaced. As a reminder, Optus is owned by Singtel, is Australia's second largest mobile network, and suffered the largest data breach in Australian history with 10 million customers having some personal information leaked. The ramifications are still being worked through, with the actual cyber attack being classed as blunt and unsophisticated, which is of particular concern. Remaining in telco land, the ACCC has released their Statement of Concerns around the TPG Telstra Regional Network Sharing Deal. Under the proposed deal, Telstra will get access to TPG's regional spectrum and TPG will get access to Telstra's regional infrastructure. The competition watchdog is concerned this would potentially see upward pressure on mobile prices and disincentivise infrastructure investment in the region. They expect to release their final decision by the end of October. Listed youth retailer Universal Store announced the acquisition of Australian clothing brand Thrills. The acquisition consolidates a key third-party brand into the Universal Store family and provides another growth angle. Universal funded the deal with existing cash reserves and issued equity to the founders of Thrills. The deal is expected to be approximately 8-12% to accretive depending on the estimates. Turning to the US, information was leaked that Apple has asked its manufacturers to reduce the number of iPhones they were to manufacture for the coming year. This has been taken as a sign of a weakening consumer or at least weakening demand for durable goods. This concern was exacerbated by Nike's softer quarterly result, which saw gross margins come under pressure and US inventory levels build 65%. Gross margin guidance was also cut 2%. Looking to the week ahead, we have the RBA interest rate decision on Tuesday, where the market is expecting a 50 bip rate hike, taking the policy rate to 2.85%. In the US, we have the non-farm payrolls report on Friday, with the market expecting 250,000 jobs to have been added in September, down from 315,000 added in August. They also expect the unemployment rate to remain flat at 3.7% and wages to grow 0.3% month on month. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.